Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation and arrival of the color guard presented tonight by the Mount Zion High School Air Force Junior ROTC. We ask everyone to remove their hats and remain standing until the color guard has left the stage. Carrying the United States of America flag and the color guard commander is Cadet Colonel Xavier Johnson. Carrying the Georgia State flag is Cadet Senior Master Sergeant Aiden Jeffries. Guarding the United States of America flag is Cadet First Lieutenant Catherine Torres. Guarding the Georgia State flag is Cadet Chief Master Sergeant Tremont Hatton. The pledge will be led by Morrow High School sophomore Vivi Nguyen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Once again, welcome to the first annual State of the Schools Dress. Each of you should have received a booklet this evening to follow the program as printed on the cover page. Tonight, we consider all of you our special guest. However, we would like to pay special attention to some very important groups to the continued success of Clayton County Public Schools. If you would like, we ask to please hold your applause until we conclude. We'd like to recognize the, we, and ask them to stand, the Clayton County Public School Board of Education. Okay. We ask to stand school district leadership, the cabinet members. We ask to stand the school district leadership, the directors and coordinators of content. Next, we'd like to recognize our school leaders. Would all of the principals who are present please stand? Next, we asked our assistant principals if they would stand and be recognized. We then invite any teachers and other district level or school level staff members not called to please stand and be recognized. Next, we would like to recognize the superintendent's wife, Ms. Laverne Beasley, members of the superintendent's family, and any special guest to the superintendent. <laughs> this next group is very important to us. We invite parents, guardians, students, and any district or school level PTA president or officer to please stand and be recognized.
We ask members of the Clayton County Legislative Delegation to please stand and be recognized. We invite the Clayton County Commissioners, the Chairman, and the CEO for Clayton County to please stand and be recognized. We invite the mayors of all the municipalities of Clayton County, all council members of all those cities, along with CEOs and chiefs of staff to please stand and be recognized. We ask the judges, chief judges of Clayton County Superior, Magistrate and Juvenile Courts, the District Attorney, the Solicitor General, and any other elected or appointed official in Clayton County or in the region to please stand. We invite members of the Clayton County Chamber of Commerce, the President and the Board of that organization as well to please stand and be recognized. We invite all of the faith-based leaders who are with us this evening to please stand and be recognized. We invite business and community leaders, if they are present, to please stand and be recognized. All program participants, volunteers, and individuals responsible for coordinating the State of the Schools event, we ask them to stand and be recognized. As you can see, there are a lot of very special people that we've come to depend on in our Clayton County public school system. And now, please welcome to the stage Stillwell School of the Arts Jr. Isaiah Hayes for a moment of reflection, followed by a musical selection by the Singing Brothers of Stillwell under the direction of Stillwell instructor and choral director, Dr. Jimmy Cheek. Good evening, Clayton County Board members, superintendent, people up under the direction of uh, Dr. Beasley. We just want to thank you guys for being here tonight. But um, I'm here to give a reflection, and um, I thank you for that, uh, for uh, allowing me to be up here to give a reflection about where we are now in Clayton County and where we are going. Clayton County has changed over the past couple of years, and, and we are changing at the moment right now because of the, this man right here. Dr. Peasy, we thank you. We thank you for all you're doing right now. And to his, um, his um, board of di directors here, and his um, stakeholders too, and to the students as well. Just wanna thank God for that, for, for them, and the parents. Dr. Beasy, last week you talked about, to the um, teacher of the honorees for the teacher of the year, about stars and how they're pressured. Clayton County has dealt with so much pressure. And now it's time for us to shine. It's time for us to put back in some energy. And it's time to, to break out of this, this, this box that we were in at one time, at one point, and to be out and go into another dimension. Uh, yes. And the stuff that we are going through, that we were going through, it had a purpose. 
and, it, and, it's, and, it's, and it's evident to me right now, because I've been in Clayton County for almost 18 years. I've been here since kindergarten to all the way up to 11th grade now. And I've seen things change, and it's all because of you guys here. Just clap your hands for that. Clap your hands for that. Excellence, is that, that's what we're striving for, is excellence here in Clayton County. And I'm a proof of it. Brothers, let's show them what the excellence is all about, because that's what we are here for. Come on, Doc. Song. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. Da, 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 da. Yesterday, a man stared to me. He said, How can you smile when your world is crumbling down? I said, It's my secret when I want to cry. I take a look around and I see that I'm getting by. Just hold. Hold on, hold on, change is coming, change is coming, hold on, hold on, don't worry about a thing, you just gotta hold on, hold on, you can make it, you can make it. Hold, on. hold on, everything's gonna be alright when the troubles of life. Just be strong. Keep the faith and just, just hold, hold on. Hold on. Change is coming. Change is coming. Hold on. Hold on. Don't worry about it. Man. You just gotta hold on. Hold on. You can make it. Can make it. Hold, on. hold on. Everything's gonna be alright. Tap your neighbor by the, by the hand and tell your neighbor, change is coming. Tell them to hold on because change is coming. Turn to the other neighbor and say, change is coming. Now, in this change, we're going to experience some things. We're going to get greater things upon Clayton County. Right now, I feel it in my bones and my toes and my feet and my knees and my back and my head and on top of my soul. Tell your neighbor, I feel change coming. La, la.
Once more, let's hear it for the outstanding performance by the Singing Brothers of Stillwell. On May 8, 2017, the Clayton County Public Schools Board of Education unanimously voted Dr. Morsis J. Beasley to serve as the district's next superintendent of schools. Dr. Beasley previously served as the district's chief school improvement officer. Dr. Beasley's term as superintendent of schools for Clayton County and as the le new leader for the fifth largest school district in the state of Georgia began on July 1st, 2017. Since that time, many of you may have witnessed his energetic ways of working with school district leaders and administrators, as well as the Clayton County community at large to ensure that all students succeed. Dr. Beasley is an enthusiastic and innovative leader with over 20 years of dedicated service to the education and the scholastic advancement of young people. Tonight, you will observe our dynamic leader that is committed to high performance and dedicated to propelling Clayton County Public Schools towards being one of the highest performing school districts in the state of Georgia and the nation. And now, without further ado, it is my privilege and honor to introduce to you Clayton County Public Schools Superintendent and CEO, Dr. Morsis J. Beasley. Please welcome him by standing and welcoming him to the stage. Thank you all. Good evening. It is an honor, a privilege to be here on tonight. Let's give our young people a great round of applause. We're very proud of our young people and I'm like them. I believe that if you hold on, change will come. I believe that things get better and not worse. You may have to go through some trouble, but on the other side of trouble, I believe that it's called better. It's called better. I'd like to acknowledge our Board of Education who's given me the opportunity to serve as Superintendent of Schools. Thank you to this board for this awesome privilege and opportunity to serve the Clayton County community. To our school leaders, our principals, administrators, assistant principals, our teachers, and other staff members, family, friends, all of you that are here, parents, guardian, our PTA leadership, presidents, our Clayton County delegation, our Clayton County commissioners, Chairman Turner, CEO, our mayors of all municipalities, our council members, CEOs and chiefs of staff, city managers, our judges, for our superior magistrate and juvenile courts, the Chamber of Commerce, our faith-based leadership, our business and community leaders, and all program participants and individuals responsible for coordinating today's event. I am so pleased to share with you on today the progress, the challenges, and the work that we're doing in the Clayton County Public Schools to move our school system to higher levels of performance. Make no mistake, we will not be defined by our past. We will only be defined by our future. Make no mistake. It is so important that we as a community believe, and as we believe, our actions will align with what we believe. Today you see on your screen a tree. And we chose the symbol of a tree for many reasons. I learned many years ago that when you learn to do good things, when you have good values, I learned that if you remain a happy and blessed individual, if you remain moral, if you learn to treat others with respect, if you learn to refuse to be a disrespectful person and one critical of others, but if you delight in consistently doing good, 
I've learned that you would be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. One thing about a tree, if it's rooted and grounded well, it will stand the test of time. This school system is the tree of this community. There are 22 benefits that a tree provides, and I'm going to list them very quickly. Trees combat climate change, they clean the air, they provide oxygen, they cool the streets and the city, they provide shade. They conserve, conserve energy, they save water, they help prevent water pollution, they help prevent soil erosion, they shield our children from ultraviolet rays, they provide food, they heal, they reduce violence, they mark the seasons, they create economic opportunities. They are teachers and playmates. They bring diverse groups of people together. They add unity. They provide a canopy and a habitat for wildlife. They block things. They provide wood, a natural resource that we need. They increase property values and they increase business traffic. See, trees provide our community and our entire city, metro area value. They provide environmental value, ecological value, personal and spiritual value, practical and commercial value, property value, and economic value. So it's only fitting today that going forward, the tree, this tree that you see, will become indicative, a symbol of Clayton County Public Schools. The parts of a tree include that of the root system, the trunk, the branches and twigs, and the leaves. The area from the top of the trunk of the tree, including the bridge, branches and twigs and leaves, is called the crown. Therefore, going forward, we want everyone in this county, in the metro area, and throughout our state and nation to recognize the tree that symbolizes Clayton County Public Schools within the environment of Clayton County as a valuable, valuable resource to the county and to the metropolitan Atlanta area and, of course, the state of Georgia. So let's talk very quickly about what the roots of the system of the tree mean. The roots represent the foundation on which the tree grows. We have established the 90-day plan. We have reported out on that 90-day plan. All aspects of the 90-day plan have been implemented. We established the superintendent's critical areas of focus for this school year. They include academically challenging classrooms. They include providing ac academic and wraparound support, professional learning. It includes ensuring that we engage our community and that we communicate the successes of our school system we have begun to implement those areas of focus. We have identified and developed three-year action plans, action steps that we believe are critical to the improvement of the school system. We have identified a framework of nine characteristics of high-performing schools and school systems. We're using that framework to guide our work. We have identified instructional priorities in the areas of literacy, numeracy, technology integration, and critical thinking, with critical thinking being the foundation of all the work that we do. You should understand that the roots of the tree, they are well grounded in this community. It is our expectation that these actions, these actions will serve as the grounding force that will propel our school system, our tree, to higher levels for many, many years to come. Let's talk about the second aspect of a tree, the trunk. The trunk represents the internal and external support structure of a tree or our school system. It includes the teachers and the stakeholders, the parents, the support staff, psychologists, psychometrists, social workers, our lunchroom staff, our custodians, our bus drivers, transportation employees, 
all of these individuals, every employee in this district is included in the trunk of the tree. Our parents, our community are included in the trunk of the tree. This school system would have no reason to exist without the existence of this community. Without the existence of our families, there would be no purpose for us to exist. It is most important that we acknowledge that as the adults, the governments, the partnerships, all of us working together add to the solid structure of the trunk. The more cohesive we are, the more we stick together, the stronger the tree will become. It's important that all of us, parents and guardians, volunteers, faith-based leaders, community leaders, government officials, business and corporate leaders, college and universities partners, all of us should bind together in support of the work that we're doing to lift up our children. Now, as you look at the tree, you will notice a circle of support. It represents our children. We are here for our children. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we are here for our children. If it's not for our children, then we shouldn't be here. It is so important. It is so important. You can tell the life and the health of a community by how it focuses and treats its children. Its children. It is most important that we maintain our focus on our children. We are lifting up our children. We are supporting our children. We are growing our children. We are nurturing almost 55,000 students served at 65 learning sites in our school system. We're improving their learning outcomes. We're ensuring that they experience academic growth through instruction, support, and equity to access opportunities, quality, and resources. We're achieving increases in student achievement with our students ready for post-secondary options. And so as we look at the roots and we have the trunk, now we get to the part of the tree, the branches and the leaves. The leaves represent the visible part of the tree. They signify the health of the tree, the health of our school system. So what I'd like to do now is share with you some leaves that will give you an indication of the health and the direction of our school system. You should know that our college and career ready performance index has increased. According to the 2016-2017 index released by the governor's office, our score was 67.8 which was an increase of almost four points. That is the largest increase that we've experienced from one year to the next since CCRPI was instituted. The report showed that five of our schools reported 80 or higher on their score. We like to acknowledge those schools, Elite Scholars Academy, Stillwell School of the Arts, M.D. Roberts Middle School, Arnold Elementary School, and Morrow Elementary School. You should know that of the 62 schools that had to report a CCRPI score, 56 scored, 56 scored 60 points or higher. 56 of those schools improved. You should know that 13 of those schools ex exhibited double-digit increases. Do you hear me? Double-digit increases. They are Eddie White Academy, Edmonds Elementary, Elite Scholars Academy, Fountain Elementary, Harper Elementary, Hawthorne Elementary, Lee Street Elementary, Martin Luther King Elementary, Rivers Edge Elementary, Suda Elementary, Tara Elementary, 
Unidos Dual Language, and West Clayton Elementary. Let's give those schools a great round of applause. We must acknowledge the schools demonstrating the most improvement on their 2017 score. Edmonds Elementary increased by almost 20 points. West Clayton Elementary increased by almost 20 points. Unidos Dual Language increased by almost 16 points. Harper Elementary, 15 points. King Elementary, almost 15 points. Elite Scholars, 14 points. Taylor Elementary, almost 14 points. Rivers Edge Elementary, almost 12 points. Fountain Elementary, almost 12 points. Lee Street Elementary, 11 points. Eddie White Academy, 11 points. Hawthorne Elementary, 11 points. Suda Elementary, 10 points. Let's give those schools a great round of applause. You should know that out of the 13 middle school campuses, 12 out of 13 had scores higher in 2017 than they did in 2016. Let's give our middle schools a great round of applause. We're very pleased that in language arts, 22 of our elementary schools showed gain. In the middle school, 17. Of the 17 middle schools, 13 showed gains. You should know 27 of the 35 elementary schools showed gain. At the middle school level, we are so pleased that seven of those schools had increases in their proficiency rates. It is so important, so important, that we understand that our students are making a difference in the area of mathematics. They are improving. We've got a ways to go but we should acknowledge the improvements that we are experiencing from one year to the next. You should know, in science, we're improving as well. 13 out of the 35 elementary schools improved. Eight out of the 14 middle schools, 16 showed improvement. It goes on and on and on, and similar in social studies, literature and composition, mathematics, economics, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We are improving. It's in your program. You should know that the governor released his list of eligible turnaround schools. While we were preparing potentially for 20 plus schools to land on the list, we were working to ensure none of our schools landed on the list. You should know that out of all the schools in the state, and there are four pages worth of schools in the state that landed on the list, only one school in our county landed on the list. And I must share that that one school had the highest score on the list for 2017. So I anticipate, we anticipate, that we will be exited from that conversation this time next year. You should know that they also do a calculation of beating the odds, where basically they look at your CCRPI score to see if you exceeded what was predicted. We are pleased to share that 42 out of our 60 schools that report a score exceeded what was predicted. Now, just in case you don't understand, that 70% of our schools beat the odds. That's the second largest beat the odds percentage in the metro area behind Cobb City County Schools. And they were at 81%. Now, make no mistake, if you don't realize something, when Clayton County in the metro Atlanta area has 70% of its schools beating the odds, that means that the right things are going on in our schools. Our teachers are teaching and our principals are leading and supporting our teachers. We're pleased that our graduation rate increased. It's almost 70%, and we anticipate, with the efforts that we're putting forth this year, that we're gonna go well above 70% this year. We're very pleased, you should know this, Mount Zion High School, grad rate improved by 13.9 percentage points. 
Riverdale. Riverdale High School. The third highest grad rate in our county at 79.9. I'll just round it up to 80%. We are so pleased that our schools are improving their grad rates. Jonesboro High School improved. Morrow High School improved. Charles Drew High School, for the first time since grad rate data has been reported, all of our schools are above 60%. And make no mistake, we are, our goal, and the principles are very clear, our goal at a minimum, at a minimum, 80, 90%. Now, I'll tell you this, I want to see it at 100%, but y'all got to give us something to work with. You got to make sure our children come to school and you got to hold them accountable. I mean, you know, our teachers want to teach and they should be allowed to do that. We are well on our way to showing our community that when they send us our children, we can graduate them from high school on time, college and career ready. We're very pleased that this year we had a reduction in vacancies. Over the last several years, we've carried over an average of 200 plus vacancies. We're pleased to share this year that we have less than 50 vacancies. Less than 50 vacancies. We're growing our own teachers. That is important. We're working with individuals who are in programs that are in our programs that want to teach our children, that desire to stand in front of our children and lift our children. And so we're growing our own. We ask for your patience and your support as we grow our teaching force here in Clayton County Public Schools. We're expanding our professional development. We're pleased that district-wide, all schools, all departments, all employees are taking full advantage of professional development. We're focused on content, pedagogy, and leadership capacity. We're all growing in our skills to lead and to work and produce at higher levels. We're so pleased to share that we're expanding our career technology ag education. Whether you know it or not, this year we've implemented several new programs. We're pleased to share that at Drew and Mondays Mill High School, we implemented the Firefighter at EMT Pathways in collaboration with our county fire department. That is an awesome, awesome thing. Our students will be able to graduate from high school and walk into the job of a firefighter and EMT. We're pleased that this year is the planning year for two aviation programs, one at North Clayton High School and one at Morrow High School. As the county that hosts and that contains the world's busiest airport, we should be producing pilots. We should be producing technicians to work on the airplane, airplanes. Clearly, everybody doesn't want to fly a plane, but there are many jobs in that airport. And when you go, and how many of you have flown in the last year? Raise your hand. All of that money <laughs> needs to be going in the pockets of our children. We're very pleased that we're studying this year and pl planning to implement the Political Leadership Academy at Jonesboro High School. We're preparing our students to take all of our jobs. All of our jobs. This year, we've established the superintendent advisories, and we're so pleased to share that we've had a governmental relations and community advisory, our faith-based advisory, auxiliary staff, teacher advisory, our parent teacher advisory, our public service, business leaders advisory, our student council. All of these advisories have done much to strengthen the communication and improve the morale here in our school system. I'd like to just acknowledge all of you. If you've been to any advisory meeting, I'd like you to stand please and be acknowledged at this time. Any advisory meeting. Let's give them a hand. 
We've also hit the road. We've gone into the community with critical conversations. People say they want to be involved. Well, you got it. You can come to any critical conversation and be engaged and learn and participate and share ideas. And I can assure you that we listen to your ideas. They inform the work that we're doing every day. Our parents, students, employees, and community are participating in the critical conversations. You should know and you should see that we're enhancing our marketing efforts. We're using social media, expanding our use of those platforms. We're increasing our followers. We're marketing. We're using every platform that we can use to share the success of our students, of our school system. Website, Infinite Campus, School Messenger, e email, telephone, broadcasting, CCPS Television, Channel 24. We're live streaming even this event for those who could not make it here on tonight. We're using our district mobile app. We have a tip line. It's being used to provide critical updates. We're sending emails directly to the inbox of our parents. If we have your email address, and if it's correct, you should be getting every communication. We're enhancing employee morale and optimism to improve. We're changing the outward perception of our school system. We're giving people the image that they should have of who we are. Oh, I have to say that again. We're giving people the image they should have of who we are. Now, as we go forward, we've got to continue to create leaves. The health of the tree is identified by the leaves of the tree. So we've got to continue to implement our high impact instructional practices. We're going to continue our STEM approach and our instructional priorities. We're going to ensure that we continue to provide support to our students in reading and math. This year, our board approved the use of new tools in reading and math, and we've identified 27,000 students who are on the cusp of performing on or above grade level. We've identified them, we're assessing them, and we're providing them online instruction in addition to the face-to-face -face instruction that they receive from their teachers with the expectation that our students will perform at higher levels. They will be proficient and distinguished when they take the Georgia milestones. But not only are we supporting our students academically, we're supporting our students socially and emotionally. We're ensuring the wellness of our students. We're working on restorative justice. We want to ensure that we treat our children in the manner in which they should be treated. That we give them an opportunity to recuperate and to navigate and not get stuck when they make a mistake. Realizing that they're only children and that they're learning. Yes, we're holding them accountable, but I can tell you the best way to hold children accountable is for adults to hold themselves accountable. We're engaging our community. Yes, we're growing our future. We're improving our communication and our marketing. We're improving our budget. We're aligning our expenditures and our revenues. We're making critical decisions to ensure that we are in a healthy position fiscally. We're working to ensure that we can hire, recruit, and retain individuals who are high performing. We're working to improve our school building and facilities. You should know the new Jonesboro High School is well on its way. We've already begun plans for the new Morrow High School, well on its way. There will be a new elementary school in the Lovejoy area, well on its way. When you all vote for the new Splost, This year, you will get a new college and career academy out of that vote. We are well on our way. We're excited. We're excited. But I want to highlight one aspect of the, the image on the screen that you may have looked over. You see that area of blue down, down there? That's the water. Water, water depending on if you come from the north or the south. 
But why is the water important? One reason water is important because you're in Clayton County. And everywhere I go, they talk about the water. Do you know that we have the best water supply in the state of Georgia? And I just happen to believe that some things are indicative of greater things. The water speaks to the life, the health of our community. We're so pleased to include the image of the water in this display on today because the water is important. In order for the tree to continue to grow, it has to have water. So what is the water that we're counting on? We're counting on the Clayton County parents, community, our business and government support. We're counting on the engagement and the collaboration with these entities. We're counting on strong families that value education and that value the work of our school system. We're counting on our students to be provided numerous opportunities for mentorships and apprenticeships. We're counting on strong collaborations and partnerships, equity of access, quality, and resources. We're counting on the improved image of our county. We're counting on the success of our county. We're counting on legislative priorities that are used to help us achieve levels of growth. You should know that we're working to deepen our roots as the tree, our school system grows. We're deepening our roots. How are we doing that? Right now we're in the process of writing, revising our five-year strategic plan. The board will get that draft in the upcoming months. That plan will be utilized to help guide the work over the next three to five years. We're counting on our students to be college and career ready, to be life ready. We're going to reinforce the three R's. Yes, reading, writing, and arithmetic, as many of us know, but I'd like to add to your experience three additional R's. We're rebuilding, we're reforming, and we're returning. We're rebuilding, we're reforming, and we're returning. What are we rebuilding? To rebuild means to build something again after it has been damaged or destroyed. We are repairing our walls. We're repairing our protections. We are changing the perceptions. We're creating a nurturing environment that results in growth for all of our children. We are rebuilding our school system. We are rebuilding our communities. We are rebuilding our students. We are rebuilding our families. We are rebuilding our infrastructure. We are rebuilding our opportunities and we're, we're rebuilding our relationships. We must rebuild. As we rebuild, we must reform. Reform means to make changes in order to improve social, education, political, economic, judicial, religious. All of those areas are in reformation. We're bringing about a change that results in an improved change in our behavior and our actions. We're changing ourselves for the better. We must reform our thinking. We must reform our words. We must reform our conversations. We must reform our actions, and we must reform our responses. We must reform our perceptions of ourselves and of each other. We must reform our beliefs, we must reform our values, and we must reform our morals. Education must be a priority. After we rebuild and we reform our thinking, then, I would submit to you that we've got to return to some fundamental things that will continue to lift up this community. Return means to come or go back to a particular place, activity, or to give back. We must return to thinking the right way about ourselves and one another. We must return to right actions. 
We must return to a healthy lifestyle, return to a sense of community. We must be able to support one another during the good and during the bad. We must return to caring for oneself and one's neighbor. We must return to lifting one another, return to respecting one another, return to working with one another, return to fellowshipping with one another, return to showing kindness to one another, return to being patient with one another, return to deferring to others over oneself, return to, help, to, to helping someone fulfill their dream, return to giving back to our community, return to paying it forward, return to faith, return to hope, return to love, return to the foundational things that make for a healthy community, healthy families, and healthy individuals. I encourage all of us to think about how you can rebuild, reform, and return. And as I close, I'd like to share this with you. It is so important, so important, that we realize that it's not just about the superintendent. I am one person out of almost 300,000 people that live in this county. It takes all of us. It takes all of us. It is imperative that we all remember that there's a purpose for us being here today. And so I'll conclude by taking a moment of privilege. I believe that all of us here today and those that are listening and those that reside in this county, I believe that we've been called to such a time as this. I believe that we are here to make our community better. And when we leave this community in whatever way, that we should leave this community better off. I want you all to know this one thing, this school system will improve. I was told years ago that whatever I do, whatever I do is going to prosper. I believe that we all need to know that whatever we do, when it's good, it will prosper. It will prosper. Our principals are doing good work and that's why they're prospering. Our teachers are doing good work, and that's why they're prospering. So as I close, this is my personal request of you all. We're going to run the school district, and I can promise you it will be run well. I can promise you that decisions will continue, continuously be made in the best interest of our children. I can promise you that achievement will improve. It has, and it will continue. I can promise you that discipline will improve, attendance will improve, the culture of our school system will improve. I can promise you those things will occur. But this is one thing that I ask of you. I ask that in this role as your superintendent, that you support, that you come and you walk alongside me, that you pray and lift me up in prayer, and my wife and my children up in prayer. That's my request of this community. And I'll share this with you. My desire has always been to love children and to live children, to educate children. But there's another desire that I have, and I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I've asked Jada, taking privilege today, to play a song that speaks to the, des the desire of my heart. I want my life to mean something. It's got to be bigger than me. It's got to be bigger than you all. It's got to be bigger than us. It is so important. It is so important. It is so important. I don't care what you believe, but I know in who I believe. And I know, I know that he's called us to such a time as this. I know that he's called us to lift up our children and to bless this community. I know that he's called us to do good things, to be kind and to be gracious. I know he's called us to make a positive difference in the lives of one another. He's called
called us to leave each other's presence better than we were when we arrived. He's called us to make our children the priority of this nation. I am honored to serve. I love all of you. Listen, that is, that song expresses the desire and the passion of my heart for my life and for this community. God bless you. Be blessed. And thank you for coming on today.